I can't believe I've been playing for so long without ever paying attention to this. And it is so important. We always want to get a higher frame rate, a lower input lag, you know, better motion. And we think it's 100% the PC, your console settings or whatever. And yeah, of course, that's most of it. But the input, so the controller you are using to play, it matters a lot. Because let's say you're getting 1,000 frames per second, right? And you start moving your sticks and nothing happens on the game, it's going to feel unresponsive. And I realize now, after trying new controllers with you know, third-party apps that allow you to you know, change the settings on the controller, and I've been focusing on this so much, I realized that most of these games, especially the third-person action adventure games, they have huge dead zones. Usually we don't see that with first-person shooters because you would notice that big time. You, you need to control the camera and it needs to be very responsive. So some of those first-person shooters usually by default have a 10% dead zone but you can lower down that to zero if you have a controller that doesn't have a stick drift so they usually do that of course expecting you you know the majority of people to be playing on a um, first party controller that has uh, sticks that are gonna start drifting after six months so it seems like the developers are aware of that so they give a margin of error so people don't have issues with their controllers playing their games but if you have a good controller that doesn't have a stick drift and you can control and fine-tune that you're gonna see a huge difference on the input lag because for example let's take a look at this Elden Ring Night Ring if you move the stick a lot nothing happens on the game so I'm, right now, you know, I'm using a mod on the PC, I'm getting 138 frames per second. This should be a very responsive experience, but it is not. Because I move the stick, and it takes a long trajectory on the stick to start moving. So it feels unresponsive as a consequence, no matter what the performance. So, of course, this dual sense. Uh, controller that I have has already issues um, but that's not what I'm talking about here what I'm talking is you move it you see let me show you very close so you see this issue look I'm gonna start moving the controller see if you can okay so look how much see if the camera focuses on the controller okay, see, see how much I'm moving the stick nothing happens now it starts moving. See all that motion and nothing happens. So it's a big problem. <laughs> the game's gonna feel like crap no matter what. So now how can you fix that? Well, depends on the controller that you have and there are some third-party apps that might work for every controller. I have to look into that. But for example, if you have a DualSense, you can use a third-party app that is called uh, DS4 Windows. That allows you to change the dead zone and to change and to an, an anti-dead zone, which is called constraint in other controllers. So, setting the anti-dead zone, what's going to do is basically, when you move a little bit, the game's going to start moving. Because basically, it's like increasing... So, let, so here's the thing. See if I can explain this uh, better. So, the game has a dead zone already. 
So when you start moving your controller, so let's see, this is the whole range, right? This is the, the, the whole range of the stick. So the game already has a dead zone, so you start moving, nothing happens. So with what this anti-dead zone setting is going to do is basically, instead of starting here, it's going to start where the game is. So as soon as you start moving the, the stick, you are here already. So you are here already. And this is all the range you have on the game. So that's how you fix it. So basically here, on this DS4 Windows app, I have the option to independently adjust the dead zone and anti-dead zone for each stick. So for example here, I'm going to set, I already tested this, on the left stick, I'm going to set this anti-dead zone to 0 0.40, <laughs> which is massive. This is an absolutely huge um, anti-dead zone. So this would be like 40%. So 40% of the, of the movement on the stick, there's nothing happen. If the dead zone was zero, that's a big problem. <laughs> so, and then for the right stick, I already tested this. I'm going to set it to 20, 20%. 20 so that's not as as big but it's still a huge a huge trajectory so I hit apply and now I'm gonna show you on the game I'll show you this you know it moves Now, if you have a stick uh, drift, or you know, in any case, if you do it too much, you will see, so the way you find the sweet spot, basically, is you start increasing the anti-dead zone. Depending on the game, you need to create profiles for every game, because every game is different. You start increasing the anti-dead zone until you see that you're getting a stick drift. So basically the camera starts moving constantly or the character starts moving alone without you touching the controller. So when that happens, you start lowering the anti-dead zone until the character no longer moves and the camera no, no, no longer moves. And the difference after doing this is absolutely huge because now the game feels so much more responsive. It's like an increase on the performance of the game. It's unbelievable. I, I, I just cannot believe how I didn't notice this. I almost finished Elden Ring. This is Night Rain, but I almost finished Elden Ring. I never noticed that this problem. It's a huge dead zone that the game has. Sekiro, also, huge dead zone. Um, I mean, almost every game, almost every single game has this issue. And after you fix it, it's, it's just next level. <laughs> it's, it's like a big, big, big improvement. Now, still, I cannot fix the issue my controller has with the stick drift. I have to replace the sticks because you see the... See how it's stuttering? And this game just has that issue too. Like you cannot just turn. See, when you turn, and I tested this with brand new controllers. I have like two new controllers that don't have any issues. This happens with this game. When you're turning, see when you when you turn from from one side to the center, the the direction of the character snaps into, into horizontal and vertical axis. And that's bad. That, that breaks the, the fluidity of the analog controller. See, see, what, see what that, that problem here? So basically, if you do this, boom, it snaps. It's, you know, it's like, there's no smooth transition of the character. That's a problem with the game. It's just the, the way they 
See? See, and it, it happens on... See, boom, boom. And it doesn't matter. Like, I, t I tested two brand new controllers with TMR sticks, capacitive sticks, don't have any issues. It's just a problem with the game. So I think this... Uh, developers should definitely, definitely expose those settings so we can calibrate it to our liking. We usually see that with first person shooter games, makes sense, especially competitive games, because no, no one is going to play a first person sh shooter game with a 40% dead zone. That's going to feel horrendous, <laughs> absolutely atrocious, but for some reason, they don't think that's important for third person. I don't get this. This idea that some games are okay at 30 frames per second with terrible performance and some games you do need better performance. I need great performance for everything. <laughs> it, it, of course, you're, it's going to be more sensitive for first person shooter competitive games, but why would you be okay with, with these issues? So this is something that needs to be um, address on every single game and uh, we need to get those settings exposed I don't want to see this for example boom this snap that I'm talking about that you cannot fix I don't want to see that it may be the yeah I mean this stick is, is kind of drifting sometimes but yeah I don't want to see that it's a big problem now Steam I was checking out Steam has a calibration uh, option for the dead zone but it doesn't have the anti dead zone option this is something that Steam should definitely add I'm sure they can do it in a day very easily with an update and they should do it because this would be great uh, for many many people uh, they do have this so you go to Steam settings controller and advanced uh, calibration settings and here on the joysticks you can change the dead zone and you can test it so for example if you have a little bit of stick drift like I have on my dual sense you can increase the dead zone a little bit so you don't have the issue but it is very rare to find that issue on the games because the games already have a dead zone and I think that's one of the reasons why these developers do it because they know people are playing a lot of people are playing with first party controllers that most likely will have a stick drift so yeah i highly recommend you get sticks that are magnetic or capacitive they are that are not potentiometer uh, sticks because potentiometer sticks will drift in less than a year okay and super fast if you use it a lot so yeah I think that they are ready for that and that's why they they do that with the games basically uh, but yeah I think maybe this is common knowledge and obvious for everyone um, but I never noticed this I don't know in the console if you're playing on a console I don't know if you have these uh, kind of settings but check it out definitely check in-game settings see if there's an there's a you know, calibration settings for the stick on the Xbox or PS5 or you know, Nintendo Switch whatever you are using because it will increase the responsiveness of the game immensely immensely so the game was feeling like floating in the air before doing this and now it's just like wow this is <laughs> amazing I can I can I can f you know can control everything so much better it's incredible so yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions if you have any questions um, I mean DualSense is a good controller because of the haptic feedback and the, the features but the sticks man they they do it on purpose. They put this garbage potentiometer sticks that will break. So you have to buy a new controller. 
they do it on purpose because when you look at the third party controllers that have TMR sticks, uh, you know, Hall Effect is an older technology but doesn't have the, the stick drift issue. If you're gonna buy a new controller, definitely get TMR sticks or capacitive sticks. If you already have a Hall Effect controller, it's fine, but they are not a lot more expensive. And yeah, I would recommend you get some TMR uh, stick controller. I have a TMR and now I got a capacitive sticks. They are both amazing. And they will not have this issue with a stick drift. And they, they are not more expensive than this. I got one for $60. Uh, the other one was a lot more expensive is because it was a fancy controller. But you can get um, you can get a controller, a third party controller that doesn't have these issues. And even if you're playing on a PS5, I've seen um, on the on the videos that there are some uh, adapters that you can use that will not affect the input lag or anything uh, badly that allow you to basically use any controller on the PS5 or the Xbox. So you can get a third party controller working on the on the PS5 or Xbox. Uh, and yeah, definitely man, do yourself a favor and get a controller with TMR or capacitive sticks. The difference is absolutely huge. It's not only that they will not break the precision that you have is so much higher. It elevates the gaming experience. To, it's just next level. The motion looks better in some games. It, it, it's, I can't tell the difference in some games. I'm like, why? Why would the motion be better? It's, so yeah, this is bad, is my point here, unfortunately, because this is a good controller otherwise, very good controller otherwise. The price is not bad. But the sticks are terrible. If they replace these sticks with TMR, this would be an amazing controller. Absolutely amazing. But yeah, these sticks are very bad. Uh, mine broke like after six months. I was already getting stick drift. And now it's broken. So I'll see if I can replace them. Uh, I, I will open the dual sense controller at the very least and clean it up and see if that helps. Uh, I might do a live, I might do a live stream for that. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you have any questions, if you have experience with this, if you already know um, some apps, some third-party apps that work for every controller on Windows, how do you fix this issue on the Xbox or PS5? Is that even an option? So yeah, let me know because this is new to me. <laughs> I've been playing for a very long time and I became aware of it after you know, getting tired of issues with my dual sense I got a new controller i'm like man this is so amazing i'm blown away and then i noticed with the brand new controller that doesn't have any issues i noticed well some of these games don't feel responsive at all and they should <laughs> because i have experience you know first person shooters like you know battlefield 6 i've been playing it i'm like when i try this third person action adventure games it's like, this is not responsive. At the same frame rate, same performance. Why is that? Because of the dead zone that the games already have. And that can be fixed very easily. Um, so yeah. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. And if you have any questions.